This is the prototype of my Antweight Combat Robot. It weighs 435 grams, and it's almost made entirely out of 3D printed parts. The design for my robot is based almost entirely off of the design of another Antweight Combat Robot called Cheesecake. Cheesecake is a very good design for many reasons. My robot has a lot of similarities to Cheesecake, so I'll go over them with my robot. For example, Cheesecake has wheels on the inside rather than on the outside like a lot of other robots do because it's harder for the robot to get through the armor and damage the wheels. And if a robot can't drive in the arena, then it loses the battle. There are also smaller details too, like the angled armor. The shape of the armor allows the robot to fall back onto one of its sides where it can drive rather than be stuck in a position where it can't move at all. Because again, if the robot can't move, it loses the fight. Also, the robot is fully reversible. The wheels stick out on both the top and the bottom, so it can drive on either side, which again is really useful because if you get flipped over, you won't get knocked out. Cheesecake is also a very modular design, which I tried to do with my robot. The weapon collar and the weapon bar are two separate parts, so if the weapon bar ever gets damaged, it can be replaced. Armor parts, there are four separate armor pieces on my robot, which can all be replaced again if damaged. And it's only held together by screws, so it's very easy to replace just singular parts if only one of them is damaged. All that being said though, my robot has a few key differences. Uh, first of all, mine is made almost entirely just out of 3D printed parts, so it's right now much weaker until I get some better materials. It doesn't have the same protection up at the front of the motor. I haven't added that in yet. And instead of having massive holes over here, which I felt like kind of weakened the overall platform, I, at least with the power of my 3D printer, I can easily just make these uh, hexagonal holes in the top and bottom plates, which gives it a little bit more strength than just a massive hole over here. But when other materials come in and I have to deal with weight problems, that could change. Here are all the electronic parts I'm using. A brushless DC motor. It spins really fast and is really powerful, so it's great for my spinner. A 30 amp brushless ESC to control the brushless motor. Two brushed DC gear motors. They're really small, but are very powerful. They're perfect for my drive. A dual brushed ESC. It can control both of those drive motors. Just one part, very handy. A receiver. It came with a controller I bought, an FSI 6. And this is the battery I'm using. It's a 500 milliamp hour 3S LiPo. LiPo batteries are really powerful and can be dangerous, so be careful when you're using one. And I also just have a switch with some wires to control on and off and distribute power to everything. Assembly is pretty simple once you have all the parts. I'm going to start off with my brushless motor and ESC. Now the ESC has A, B, and C wires, while the motor has colored wires. I'm going to put the black wire to A, the red wire to B, and the yellow wire to C. And the brushless motor is all wired up. Now I will connect it to channel 3 on my receiver, making sure that the signal wire is in the correct spot. And I'm all good there. I'm going to move on to my brushed motors and ESC. Now the ESC can control both motors, and I just have tape to indicate which motor goes where, just so that in the future everything spins in the correct direction and channel 1 is in the right spot and so on. Now the ESC connects to the receiver, this bunch of 3 connects to channel 2, again making sure that signal wire is not in the place of the negative wire. And this lone wire connects to the signal on channel 1. And because the ESC is connected to two signals, it can control both motors independently. And I'm going to connect my power switch and my wires just to the battery. 
that wires are basically just a power distributor. Just gives me two places to connect. One for each ESC. And everything's wired up. I should be able to turn the circuit on. And we get some beeping. I'm also going to connect some wheels onto the drive motors just so you can see the direction they're spinning in when I show you how the circuit works. Now the way I have everything set up is that these two motors are channels 1 and 2. They're both controlled by the same dual ESC. And the brushless motor is channel 3, which is controlled by the brushless ESC. On my controller, channels 1 and 2 are mixed together on this stick. So I can control them however I want. And these are my drive motors, of course. So this would be forward, this would be backward, this would be right, and this would be left. Now my brushless motor is controlled by the other stick, which doesn't actually spring back like this one does. It'll hold in place, so it's perfect for throttling up and down the weapon. Now this robot is just a prototype. It's not going to be seeing any battles anytime soon. So a lot of it is actually 3D printed out of PLA, which is a brittle and relatively weak material. But it prints super nicely, and it's pretty cheap. So I printed a lot of bike parts with it, including my top and bottom plates, all my armor. This is just the back piece of my armor. My motor holders, and this little weapon bar. These would all be replaced with stronger materials in the future for an actual battle. Plates would probably be carbon fiber, armor would probably be ABS, motor holes would be either PETG or ABS, and the weapon part would most definitely be metal. Not all of the 3D printed parts are 3D printed out of PLA though. This weapon collar is 3D printed, but it's made out of TPU, so these little teeth can squish and allow for the weapon bar to attach onto it. This would all go over the weapon motor. The wheels are also 3D printed out of TPU, so they can squish and absorb impact when the robot hits the ground. It also gives it more traction because it's sort of this rubbery material that's really grippy. Now the inside of the wheel, however, is actually printed out of PET-G. It's a separate part inside the wheel. The motor has a D-shaped shaft, and PET-G is a bit more durable than TPU, so this makes sure that the motor doesn't just completely destroy the hole and stop spinning the wheel. Before we start building the robot, there's just one more part that I need to mention, and it is this. It's a standoff, which is kind of like a nut, but it's much longer. And this is really important because it's basically what holds the robot together, and it forms the structure. It will go between the two plates, and there will be screws on either end that basically hold it together. So all of the electronics and all the other parts are sandwiched between these and held by the screws and the standoffs. It's finally time to fully assemble the robot. Now that the wheels are attached, let's just check to make sure that all the wheels are driving in the correct direction. Forward. Backward. Left and right. Alright, works fine.
All right, the robot is finally assembled. So now it's time to do a drive test and a weapon test to see if everything works properly. I have the robot on and I have my controller here. Let's try driving around the robot a little bit. Forward. Left. Right. Backwards. Seems to work fine. Let's do a quick weapon test just to see if it works. Yikes, that's it's really loud. I think it's vibrating a bit too, so I'll have to figure that out at some point, how to fix it. Anyway, that's the end of this video. There will be a part two of this video coming out where I will continue to improve the robot, change the design, change the materials, make it combat ready. And if I am able to find a competition near me, uh, we will get a fight video, we will get to see the robot fight, and that will be extremely exciting, so please subscribe if you want to see the robot fight. Uh, I also want to ask everybody for their suggestions on anything that could reduce the robot's weight, uh, any design changes, uh, suggestions for materials I should use, and I really would value any advice, feedback, anything. Uh, especially from people who have experience with combat robots, please share your experiences, your knowledge. I would greatly appreciate if you could help me improve this robot and make this something really great. And with that, I would like to thank everybody who is going to comment in advance, and I want to thank you for watching.